you know, I, I, I just wanted to do something that I love doing, you know, for a living. You know, I didn't want to punch a time cock. I didn't want to uh, be on, on somebody else's uh, payroll. I wanted to do something that I enjoy doing and be able to teach. That is my passion, is to teach people how to fish. Teach people how to fish swim baits. Teach people how to, you know, how to catch fish on swim baits. This is my, my lifelong goal, you know. This is what I do. This is what I was put here for, um, and I enjoy this more than anything. And, and that's what drives me, is to be the best that I can be, to put the best lures out there that catch the most fish and the biggest fish possible. This is my craft. The earliest memory I've had of, of fishing was with my dad. Um, well, he's a big hunter. He, he didn't fish much, but he did take the time to take me fishing. We used to go to some of our friends' ponds back home in South Mississippi. So my, you know, my grandfather also took me fishing when I went to visit him for the summer. So I've been involved with fishing ever since I was five or six. Um, and I've been with it ever since. It's always been a pastime. It's something that I do, I've always loved to do. I was very well known as a finesse fisherman. Um, shaky heads, drop shot, um, during my guiding years. Um, I did it to become versatile. I did it to learn more about fishing. I did it to know each technique excels in different things. I wanted to teach people how to do their electronics, teach people how to use different techniques. And I made the transition from swim baits. You know, I kept asking myself, how do I catch the bigger fish? You know, most people, when things get tough, they downsize, but that doesn't make your fish any bigger. So, you know, I use the analogy that, you know, um, doing something over and over and over again and expecting different results just is, is definition of insanity. So I said, well, what happens if I upsize? And that's where it started. That's how I got started, that's fish and swim baits, and, and, it, and it was all uphill from there. Shortly after I started upsizing my lures, I noticed that my fish got bigger. And the one thing that I noticed is, is a lot of the swim baits that were available 13, 14 years ago, or even 15 years ago, were all trout baits, and they were all out of California. So there, we don't have any trout, we don't have many trout lakes in the area of Atlanta. So I wanted to make something that caters to our forge, shad, and specifically gizzard shad and thread fan. And that's when I decided I needed to make a, uh, a, a, a bait that caters to the south. There were a lot of swim baits out there, but there wasn't one that necessarily fit our area. And he wanted something to uh, almost fill a gap that in swim bait fishing that was, you know, wasn't there when he first started. I used to call it the trout of the south because that's exactly what it is. It's just, it's just that's what our main forage is. And uh, so that's how I got started making them, is, is, is a lot of the bigger fish that I caught, I've also noticed that they have bigger gizzard tails coming out of the gullet of their, of their mouths. So uh, that, hand in hand, is why I got started in making them. I spent a copious amount of time, trial and error, uh, research and development of the baits. You know, um, when I get a bait, I swim it. Okay, that looks good. Can we, what can we do to improve on it? And I can make three or four different varieties of it just to make sure that I squeeze every little bit of action or any, any extra things that I can get out of that bait. What can I do to get it more fluid, more lifelike and louder, you know, more kick, you know, what, what, there's all sorts of things that you can do. Sometimes you need to just start over from scratch. Other times you could just modify what you have, put a different bill in it, put a shorter bill in it, a wider bill in it, move the screw eyes, tighten the joints, make the bait skinnier. I mean, there's tons of things, lots of physics in making baits. You can't teach this in school. You have to do trial and error, you know? You can't sit there, there's no book you can read, there's no YouTube video you can watch. You have to physically do it because every bait is different. The amount of time he puts into a bait to make sure that it swims just right or it sinks just right, uh, 
he'll go through hell to make sure that thing works. When it comes to action, he wants to make sure that, that is the absolute perfect swimming bait that he can make. He's always thinking. He's always thinking how to make it better. I think it's the time he puts in experimenting, testing, tuning, refining, and then um, catching fish with the baits. Like he really puts blood, sweat, and tears into making these baits fish well, where they're going to catch fish for him like he wants to. And, uh, and then he goes to market with them, not just, here's a bait that swims, I'm going to sell it. I mean, the, he's, he's trying to come up with a better way to catch a bigger fish. Anybody that catches a personal bass or a fish on my baits, I like to share it on Instagram to share the excitement that they had when they caught that fish. They thought enough of it to send me the picture, I post it on social media. I want, I want, I want, to, I want to share that excitement with them. Um, you know, that they caught their personal best or, um, you know, that they caught a bunch of fish or they won a tournament or whatever. You know, that's what I see. I, you, there's no greater compliment to a bait maker was when you email them and say, man, I caught the snot out of them on there and I caught the biggest fish I've ever caught. I mean, that is the ultimate compliment that you can get. I mean, no money can buy that. I think him collabing with Ketchco to just make it a more mainstream, I guess, lure instead of just kind of like mom and pop in the garage making our lures, um, that was his opportunity to try and get the name more out there and make sure everybody could have a bull shad. This is the evolution of bull shad from generation one all the way to where we are now, um, even prior to generation one. Um, it also has our herring in here and also the prototype uh, 3D printed um, baby 3.75 uh, baby bull shad. Um, so this is what's got me where I am today. I mean, this is 13 years of, uh, of making swim baits and, and, and learning from designs and learning resin. Um, you know, it's, this, is, this, is, this is what I do. This is my craft. He's not just a business, he actually cares. He wants people to use his bait, learn how to use his bait, and be successful with them. It's not just a bait to put in your box and say, ooh, I own a bull shad. He wants you to fish them and be successful with them. And that's Mike. It's been Mike forever. I've watched Mike make, write articles for free just to teach people how to fish baits and do the things that he's doing on the water uh, for years. Make lures to catch the fish is what I do. My, my goal was never to do this for a living. My goal was to guide for a living. At some point, I had to make a decision. You know, I had to guide or make baits, and I chose to make baits. And that's 13 years later, here we are. There's a saying that my passion is my alarm clock. You know, you wake up, you're ready to go. You know, there's no, oh God, it's Monday. I don't do that. I work Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I enjoy what I do. Uh, I come in here and say, what, what can I, what ash can I kick today? You know, I just want to, uh, you know, I just want to make it happen and, and just be the best that I can be at what I do. You know, um, it's been a, it's been an awesome ride. It's been a very en enjoyable ride. I'm doing what I love doing, teaching people and making fishing lures so people can get their personal best. That's why I do this.